Hey everyone, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. A few weeks ago, I was challenged to see if I could sell two Jeep Wranglers. Now, I wasn't just selling two Jeep Wranglers. I, I had to hunt down two Jeep Wranglers, buy them, clean them, fix them, sell them both in under seven days. One turned out to be an absolute score and the other a total loser. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you what I paid, what we did to them and how much money I made and lost on both. And I'm not just gonna stop there. I ended up buying two more Jeep Wranglers since. So I'm gonna tell you all about it in this video. Let's get going. Now, yes, this video is all about Jeep Wranglers, but, but I'm not just gonna teach you about Jeep Wranglers. I'm gonna teach you about the business. I'm gonna show you how it works. And I'm gonna show you how you can take a small investment and turn it into some serious cash and even a viable business that pays you instead of having to work for the man the rest of your life. Hey there, let me take a minute to interject and tell you why you need to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done it. This channel is all about having fun and giving you guys my content for free. I wanna share all my experiences with you, all the good and all the bad, so make sure to subscribe down below. Welcome back to part two. So once again, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. A few weeks ago, I was challenged to buy, fix, clean, and sell two Jeep Wranglers in under a week and see if I could do it. Well, I actually ended up doing really, really well. My first Jeep was a 2011 two-door, six-speed Wrangler with 124,000 miles. Here it is right here. So here's my 2011 two-door soft top. The good thing about the 2011 is you have the newer interior, which I'll show you in just a second. But as you can see, these wheels are absolutely horrendous. They've, just, they've ruined the Jeep. And then it being a sport, you have the soft top with the clear windows. We're gonna tint those windows. So we're gonna put Sahara wheels and tint the windows to give this thing a little bit of a change. And then you can see the fenders are all sun faded. We're going to do something to bring those back. I'm this is my 2011 Jeep Wrangler Sport. So this one, we didn't just slap some stickers and change the wheels on it. We did a uh, reverse switch because the reverse lights weren't working. We did, we did a coil pack, we did plugs, we detailed it, we painted the fenders. It was in, you know, you saw, it was in rough shape and now it's not. My second was this 07 Rubicon that you see behind me that came in really, really rough. Here it is right here. Colored hood, the clear coat's peeling off. We have the typical mirror, whacked the hood, dent, and the squirrels when we get up close to it. German has not that much time into this door. And now we have like a mirror finisher close to it already, just off the polish. The issue is this thing is lit up like a Christmas tree. So the paint just peels off. That's the clear coat. It's getting repainted There's today too. Update on the hood. A, I don't even know. Driven through water, we're gonna drop the pan too and just flush the transmission. After the transmission sit. service, we painted the fenders and the front bumper as well as the grill. The wheels were like a faded black. We painted them black and then changed them to gunmetal. And then we did some rocker repairs and I bought some new rims to upgrade the 2011. I put on some newer Rubicon decals to change the look a little bit and update it. Here's what the finished product looks like. Now I paid about $8,000 for each Jeep. This black Rubicon Unlimited, I ended up paying $7,980 for. The 11 two-door, I paid $8,200 for. Now the Rubicon right here, we put a lot of time and a lot of money into it. I'm probably into it for another $800 or so plus seven days labor. Now I did do a lot to the 2011 Wrangler as well, but it went really smoothly, it went really well, and it sold in two days. Bye, Jeep. I ended up selling it for $13,000. So I paid right around 8,200. I put a set of wheels on it, I did some work, figure I'm into it for 9,500 and I sold it for 13,000. Now if I'm into it for 9,500 and I sold it for 13,000, I made $3,500 on that Wrangler. Now this one right here, I'm having all kinds of headaches with. So there's the Jeep behind me. It came out really, really nice, but it's a little bit rougher than I would like to sell. So I'm at the auction again. I'm gonna sell it today. So I bought it at the auction. I cleaned it, I fixed it up. Did a lot to this thing. So it is a completely different Jeep than it was two weeks ago when I bought it here. So we're at the auction, we're gonna see what we can get for it. And behind me, you'll see my father will bring in a Ford Escort too to see what we can get for that. So I'm here at the auction and now that I'm looking at a black Rubicon with gunmetal wheels, I'm kind of wishing I just went with basic silver Rubicon because the decals that I put on mine 
almost makes it look like it's not a Rubicon anymore. Somebody just stuck stickers to it. There are a bunch of Jeeps here today and it's getting late in the season. So I don't know what I'm going to get for that Jeep. Well, it sold at the auction, but then it was kicked back. The sale was canceled for unibody damage, frame damage, rust on the frame. Well, well, it's a Jeep Wrangler in New England. Obviously, it has a rusty frame that's to be expected, but if you find any holes or soft spots, including the inner rocker panels, which is what they found on this one, they can cancel the sale. Even if it's sold red light, red light means as is, too bad. If I bought that car with an engine knock or a slipping transmission, too bad, it's mine. But for some reason, if there's rust on the frame, they can cancel the sale. The transaction was canceled. So I'm at the auction week two. Weird thing about the auction, I'm selling that Ford Escort too. How long has that thing been running? I just showed up to check it out and the Escort's running with nobody around. So has it been running for hours, weeks? I don't even know. So we're gonna rerun this today and announce frame damage, but let's see, where is the rust? I guess right there maybe? I don't know. It's a Jeep. Don't you just expect rust when you buy a Jeep? So I sold the black two-door and what I sold the black two-door for is what I bought that. That's an 11 Rubicon Unlimited with premium top, fabric top, not vinyl top, automatic, Uconnect, and I have an extra set of wheels, even though those say Jeep. Huh, that says Jeep on it. I've never seen those wheels before. And that one retails for like $18,000, so you can see how it keeps snowballing one car after the next. Now you may have seen my turning $400 into a Ferrari in under 12 months flip video. That was part one. I'm still working on part two. You might see that I still have this Malibu here. Well, the, the purpose of that video is to show you that you can start with little to nothing and grow from there. And that's how I grew this entire business. So I started with not a lot of money and each flip rolled into more money into another vehicle, into better vehicles and a bigger business. And now I have what you see behind me and everything's paid for. Well, the same thing is happening with the Jeep Wranglers, which is a perfect segue to introduce the vehicles behind me. So I sold the two-door 2011 Jeep Wrangler and I sold it for $13,000. And then I bought this 2011 Rubicon four-door unlimited for the $13,000. Now this four-door unlimited Rubicon, I should easily get $18,000 for it. So you can see how it keeps snowballing into a nicer car, into a nicer car, into a nicer car. Forget that one right there. Let's just work off the 2011. I paid eight, I have 95 into it. I, I sold it for 13, I took the 13, I bought this one. I'm gonna fix this one, clean it up. I'll be into this one for about 14.5 and I'll sell it for 18. So if you figure I had a total investment of $9,500 in the original Jeep, I now have $18,000 worth of Jeeps for that $9,500. And to move on, this is my newest acquisition. This Jeep Wrangler is a 2014 with 89,000 miles that I just bought yesterday. And one of my guys actually had a great idea of taking this grill and putting it on here and this grill and putting it on here because this is pretty much a stock looking Jeep minus this mean looking grill. And this is a lifted Jeep with Rockstar wheels, Nitto Terra Grappler tires, a lift kit, bumpers in the front, a bumper in the rear. This Jeep is meant to have that grill. Now I'm gonna remove all these silly stickers on it. We're gonna clean it up, fix it. You can see that it has the tinted windows already, has a bike rack, has the aftermarket rear bumper. This is gonna be another this is gonna be another awesome Jeep when we're finished with it. Now, because I have so many Jeep Wranglers, I'm kind of taking parts off each one and co-mingling them all to make them a little bit different. This one right here, I just want it to look like a stock red Rubicon. I'm not gonna change the wheels and tires. You can see that we grinded them down and we're gonna polish them up. I'm gonna shine those tires up. I'm gonna make this look like a stock Rubicon. This one, I'm gonna make it look nice. I'm gonna make it look clean and not aggressive. This is a two and a half inch lift kit. Still has the Rubicon wheels on it with some meaty tires. I'm gonna put that grill on this one and it's gonna just look like a nice Jeep. And then I'm gonna go through it and fix what needs to be fixed. So here is our most recent acquisition. This is the 11 Rubicon with 124,000 miles. Automatic with premium top. And what I think I'm gonna do is I have a soft top, like the base model soft top, the vinyl one. I think I'm gonna put the base model soft top on this Rubicon, keep that hard top, because winter's coming, put it on that Rubicon, and keep the premium soft top for myself for another Jeep next summer. Or just possibly resell it next summer, because the premium tops are worth a ton of money. All right, 
how to remove a Jeep Wrangler hardtop. Ready? Hey, 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 you forgot all the bolts. You missed a bolt, put that down. Hang on. All right, let it down. All right, I'm letting go. Oh wow, look how filthy it is in here. What did this thing roll over? Wow. It must have sat outside and then they just put the top back on it. Now look how good that looks though. Oh man, with no top on, this is a good looking Jeep. Well, I'm actually really happy with how this Wrangler came out. It looks beautiful, but as a lot of people said, it's kind of just makeup on a pig. It's a rough Jeep. Like if you look in here, somebody had kind of already spray painted the frame with like some rubberized undercoat or wasn't us. I don't know what some people's expectations are because I got a lot of hate on this thing. Like this rust repair, this is metal in here. I put in new metal, we welded it in, and then we blended it and we painted it. I think it looks pretty good. Now a lot of people's expectations seem to be unrealistic. Now maybe if it was your Jeep and you were spending your money on it, you'd do it differently. But you have to figure out what it's what's worth doing and what's not worth doing. It's an 07, 130,000 mile beat up Jeep. It's not a $30,000 Jeep. Well, here's how I made the decision on this Wrangler. So I took the hard top off this one and it's going on my new Rubicon because the new Rubicon is really, really nice and it has a premium top. I'm gonna keep the premium top for next year because we're going into winter. So somebody buying that red Rubicon is going to much prefer a hard top to a convertible top. So I'm gonna keep that convertible top for later. I also have an extra vinyl soft top that I'm gonna put on this Rubicon. Now I got a lot of hate on this Jeep. I think it looks beautiful compared to what it came in as. We did an awesome job, including everything German did to it. Now look, it's a rusty old Jeep. We are from New England. Things rust out here. It's an 07, so it's 13, it's almost 14 years old. Obviously, it's gonna be a rusty old Jeep. So you have to pick and choose what we're gonna do. A lot of people just call me a shady used car dealer and that's why they don't buy cars from car dealers. Do you know anybody, anyone, name one single person that's gonna do as much work to their vehicle before they sell it as we did to this one. Nobody's gonna put this much time and effort into their car that they're going to sell. So we do this and then somebody can buy it and then they can do whatever they want to it. Now, th now I also said this one is still rougher than I'd even like to sell, so I'm probably not going to sell at retail. I'm just gonna run it through the auction and see what we can get for it, being better than it was when we originally got it. Hopefully we can still make a little bit of a profit on it. Looking at it, like, I'm really, really pleased with it. Now the top's off, this is, this is what's beautiful. Jeep Wrangler Unlimiteds with top's off, there's nothing cooler looking than that. It has the dual exhaust, it already has the lift kit, this is a really cool looking Wrangler. And here's the seat. We sewed it up best we could. I mean, I'm not an upholsterer, so we did that on our own. Let's see what German did to the two Jeeps. Oh yeah, so much better with the hard top. Way better. Did you paint it? You painted the top? Oh wow. And if you remember what this top looked like, we still have the crack, but whatever, it is what it is. Looks so much better. There's no touch-up spots anymore. So now that the top is on, I kind of like it looking like a stock Jeep. I was going to change these wheels out, but they're actually Jeep wheels with good tires, so we can clean that edge up. We'll grind that down, wet sand it, and then bring it back to life. Now it has a clean top. Jeremy, what did you just say? Oh, the interior tire wash the rug. Go ahead. Oh, the rugs look good. The seats look good. So it has, it has the new interior. Oh, this is going to be a nice one. I feel like that Rubicon lettering is what we should have put on that one. Because even though I really, really like the way it looks... I do too, I think it looks awesome, but I feel like people are going to say, oh, it's not a real Rubicon, you just suck stickers on it, you know? But that looks damn good right now, right now. And I like those wheels too. And it already has a lift kit. 
thinking it might be worth investing all of our money into it and making it right. Oh, it's so good. Two hours later. I'm gonna tape up the Jeep fenders and paint them. The wheels are now gonna get wet sanded and then buffed, polished. Look at this right here. That was a big crack in the top. Here's German, he's the skill behind the business. You've seen him in videos before. German, explain what you're doing to this grill right here. This came off the red Rubicon. We want it to look stock. What's going on over here? So we're just gonna, um, taping it up so we can um, paint these grill um, black. We're gonna go with the gloss black on these. So we, we don't want no paint on the red. So we are taking our time and taping this up. Now I had brought up the idea of maybe just painting this black because it's easier. But I think your decision to just paint these is better because we want this to look like a stock Jeep when we're finished. Now in just about every vehicle we purchase, the first person I go to is that guy over there. German goes through them, he checks them out, and then I ask him what he wants to do to the cars. And he tells me his opinions because his opinions are as valuable as mine. He knows the business just as well as I do. And in some aspects, he knows them even more. So I love to hear what he has to say about everything we do. He had the idea about the tops. We have another guy that had the idea about the grills. So it's not just about me and what I think. It's a team effort. What everybody, and everybody has an input. Everybody has a say in how we're doing these things. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, neighborhood. <laughs> what is that right there? This is part two to that Ferrari video. Explain yourself, please. All right, this is the $100 deposit. The gentleman is gonna go and get the remaining $1,100. For the Malibu? Um, it's for the Malibu. Oh, heck yeah. And it's going to mess as is, as shown. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So you can see how easily these grills come out. That took me a total of 10 minutes. And it's a lot cleaner looking than that other aggressive one. So now it's more universal, easier to sell to a lot more people, a larger demographic. And here's the other grill that'll go on this one, which is much more fitting to the style of this Wrangler. Check this tool out. This is how we clean everything. You can actually buy that on our Amazon store with the link in our description. We use it on everything. The 14 we're doing a state inspection on, again, 2014, 89,000 miles, came in with a current inspection sticker. We're doing a new inspection. You can see how much better this grill looks on this Wrangler versus the black Wrangler. Also, we started grinding down the bumpers. Front's done, ready for paint. Well, ready for primer, then paint. Then we're gonna hit the rear, too. Obviously, we're gonna paint them both at the same time, though. German's got the red Rubicon all lined up. Dyed the carpets. See how nice the carpets came out. Going to the rear too. They look brand new and this thing was filthy when it came in. And the more I look at this black one, the more I like it, the more I want to keep it for myself. It's awesome. And look at how nice it looks with the new grill. So this new grill changed the entire look. It's not so mean looking. It's just classically styled Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. It has a lift already. It has some pretty meaty tires. I kind of want to keep it for myself. Here's the front bumper before and and after. So this wheel had all kinds of brake dust on it. So what we did is put some muriatic acid on a brush and then we just scrub it on, let it sit for a few minutes. Don't do this on chrome, by the way. It'll discolor the chrome. We let it sit for a few minutes. It's eating at the rust right now. Don't get it on your skin. I got it on my finger and it's burning. And then I'm gonna scrub it with a toothbrush and just rinse it off. Now I've scrubbed it. I'm just gonna rinse it off. And any leftover, I'll do again. Finished product on that wheel. Here's what it looks like after. Yep. And these wheels, now that we've grinded them down with an angle grinder, I'm just gonna wet sand them with some 1500 grit. I'm gonna do 1000 and 1500 and then I'm gonna clear coat over them. And you can see that it leaves the Jeep black. Here's what we use on the wheels. Don't use too much of it. You'll eat and corrode the wheels. It is highly corrosive. Three Jeeps, three finished products in under seven days. Two-door, 
came out awesome. This took a day. We bought it yesterday and it's finished. Going to the red Rubicon. Again, we took the top off this one. Now it's on the Rubicon, polished the wheels. We cleaned them up, put the top on. The interior is spotless. This thing was pretty filthy when it came in. Now it's nice. This is an 11 with 124,000 miles. Then the Rubicon, I really like it with the top off and I kind of want to keep it, but everything has to sell. So this is going to go and we have a tinted window soft top to go with it off a Jeep that we sold this past summer that had a hard top and a soft top. We kept the soft top just for such circumstances. So that's it for part two. The four door Rubicon, kind of a bust so far. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Even if I just break even and get my 8500 back, I'll be pretty happy. The two door was a complete score because it rolled into another one. Now you can see how everything snowballs from a small investment into a large investment over time. And these Jeep Wranglers were just a perfect example of that and how I grew my business. And also that Malibu finally sold so I can continue my $400 into a Ferrari flip video. So make sure to stay tuned because that's coming out real soon. So if that was at all helpful to you, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more free information content on the regular. Guys, thanks for watching always. Also, if you want to support my channel, check it out. I got merch. You can, you can click the link down below, buy our merch, help support our channel. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for sticking around with me. I'll see you guys later. Adios.